Hello and welcome to our tutorial on digital electronics and today I was just thinking of you know just discussing the RS latch with you okay so the RS latch that you can see over here comes under the category of sequential circuits in digital electronics okay so there is a bit of difference between sequential and combinational logic circuits that you'll have obviously you know previously come across in our previous tutorials so if i just you know uh, give you a short you know difference between the combinational and the sequential circuits then it would some i mean just look something like this okay so for that you'll need to just you know bear with me for some time okay as i just you know draw some block diagrams over here so if this let's say if this box over here represent the circuit of a I mean represent the you know the logic diagram or the block diagram of a combinational circuit okay so here is the input terminal and there goes on the right the output terminal and in case of the sequential circuit the block diagram would look something like this okay sorry there right so that's the box and here is a combinational circuit okay along with or rather combined with a memory element okay so there goes the input okay right here and here is the output and from the output path there is a feedback path to the memory element and this feedback path from the memory element feeds in directly to the combinational circuit so as we can see here the sequential circuit just stores the states of the circuit I mean the output states of the circuit in its memory and uses it to determine the next output state along with the present inputs okay so that's pretty interesting and complicated as well so if we you know just try and jot down the differences over here in case of combinational circuits outputs depend I mean depend only on the present inputs okay present inputs to the circuit okay so in case of combinational circuits the outputs generated would obviously depend only on the present inputs being supplied to the circuit but in case of sequential circuits what would happen is that the outputs depend on the present state of the circuit okay this just depends upon the you know the past state of the circuit as well as on the present inputs okay that's on present inputs so here in case of the sequential circuit we see that the state or rather the output state of the circuit which it had earlier is stored in the memory okay in the memory element okay now the memory element just feeds this state variables back into the combinational circuit okay or rather into the combinational logic part of the sequential circuit and now upon the arrival of fresh or new inputs to the circuit a new output is you know generated or calculated or determined based or rather by processing the present inputs as well as the previous state of the circuit okay so therefore the outputs in case of a sequential circuit depend on the past state of the circuit as well as on the present inputs okay so that is basically the major difference between the combinational and sequential circuits so apart from that there are other small differences as combinational circuits are faster since the delays over here are only due to the propagation delays of the logic gates involved in uh, the construction of the you know the combinational circuit and the sequential circuits are comparatively slower as you know in compare i mean as um, there are certain delays involved in the feedback loop along with the delays involved in the logic gates i mean the propagation delays of the logic gates okay so therefore the net delay over here increases so that's why they're slower so apart from that the combinational circuits are you know easier to design as the design process over here is pretty straightforward and simple but based on design the sequential circuits hold a slightly 
complicated status okay so they're buzz i mean they're just you know complicated to design okay so that's over here i mean the discussion over here that's just you know pretty much sums up the basic differences between the combinational and the sequential circuits okay so keeping that in mind if we are just you know going into the details about the rs latch now okay so here we come to the rs latch okay so you all might be wondering by now what relation does rs latch have with the differences that we just discussed previously okay if you are thinking that then i might say that the rs latch represents the simplest sequential circuit okay so here you go the rs latch is the simplest sequential circuit ever made and the rs latch is also sometimes referred to as the sr latch as well so it definitely just doesn't matter about i mean what you refer to the circuit as sr latch or rs latch so definitely it's not a problem okay so the logic diagram of the rs or the sr latch looks something like this okay consider this as the circuit of the sr latch and then over here we have the inputs s and r inputs okay and here we have the outputs okay let me just write it down s and r inputs and here these are the outputs okay and the outputs are referred to as q and q bar okay so here you might be wondering what does r and s or s and r mean okay here s refers to as set and r refers to as reset so in this circuit basically the output is produced by setting and resetting of certain logic gates and now if you are wondering about what goes on inside this box that will become clearer if you are just you know patient enough to consider this circuit so here is a nor gate okay and here is another nor gate i refer to it as gate number one and this is gate number two one of the inputs of the nor gates to each one of each one of them and from the output of one we have a feedback path right over here to the output of i mean to the input of two and from the output of two we have another feedback path feeding one of the inputs of the gate number one okay so here we have the r and the s inputs that is the reset and the set inputs right over here while this terminal represents q and the other terminal over here represents q bar and now if you are wondering about how the circuit works then i would just explain it to you with the help of this truth table let me just first write down the heads okay there you go now in the circuit as you can see here whenever the s input is set to logic one state and the r input is set to logic zero or rather i might prefer writing it somewhere here okay whenever s is set to logic one state and r to logic zero something like this the q output will be set to the logic one state whereas q bar being just the complement of that of q would be set to logic zero state as well okay so now if we are just you know planning to uh, set let's say the R input, if we just set it to logic 1, and S input, we set it to logic 0, okay, something like this. The output at Q, okay, just switches from the logic 1 state to the logic 0 state. You can just verify this, okay, by means of, you know, just applying these inputs and checking out what happens through the, you know, the NOR gates right over here, okay. So, this is a bit of, uh, you know, homework that I'm providing you with, just evaluate about how we're getting these outputs yourself all right so here as you can see here that by you know putting uh, a logic one signal at r and a logic zero signal at s we get a logic zero signal at q and q bar being the complement of q has a logic one signal okay now if we are just you know trying and uh, uh, provide a you know signal of or rather logic signal of zero to both r and s inputs just like this then we can see that the output state would remain unchanged okay so if we consider this to be the previous state okay let's say q is at zero and q bar is at one so we're getting one over here and a zero over here and we have zero at both these you know inputs so zero and one in terms of nor logic makes a zero and zero and zero in terms of nor logic makes a one so we see here that 
the Q and Q bars output states remain the same. Okay, it doesn't change, so it will be just the same as before. Okay, so again, if we now we are just you know short of one combination that's of applying the logic one to both the RNS inputs. This is the area I definitely don't want to venture into as this just would cause both the outputs to go into the don't care states. Okay, I would like to represent it by red over here, providing logic one signal to both the RNS inputs causes the circuit to go into the don't care states. Okay, now why does that happen? Okay, if you care for an explanation, I would just show you right here. Imagine that we have given 1, 1 to both, or rather here, 1, 1 to both the inputs, and let's say the previous state of the circuit was a 0, 1. Okay, so since it was 0, 1, we had a 0 right here and a 1 right over here. So 1, 1 in terms of NOR logic makes 0. And here, 1, 0 in terms of NOR logic also makes a 0. But Q and Q bar cannot be equal. Here, Q cannot be equal to Q bar as this is logically impossible okay but we see here that q tends to be equal to q bar so therefore whenever this circuit enters into this state the circuit you know just faces a you know uh, a sort of conflict i mean you, the circuit is you know basically thrown into a conflicting state where it just you know fights this condition and it just gets confused as to what it should output since this is this state is you know logically impossible so therefore this circuit enters into certain invalid states during this condition and we have don't care outputs okay so there is definitely no meaning as to what output we would have here as the outputs here would become quite unpredictable okay it could be anything we don't know as to what it should be so definitely due to this reason this state needs to be avoided okay it needs to be avoided whenever we use a latch circuit in any of the practical applications okay so keeping in mind I would also like to say that this circuit okay is referred to basically as the NOR RS latch okay and it's just the active high circuit okay so keeping that in mind i can also say that this circuit is also you know constructible by means of you know nand gates if i would just you know use another color over here so these if these are the nand gates okay right over here okay then we would have the circuit looking somewhat of the same manner as what we had previously so here we would have the s and r inputs and these would be the q and q bar inputs as well okay so if we you know just try and draw the truth table in this uh, over here then we just i will just you know put forward the heads before okay q and q bar now this nand rs latch okay nand rs latch is an active low circuit so therefore its output conditions would be just the reverse of what we had for the nor rs latch so therefore if we are you know if we uh, look at the truth table then it will just be the reverse okay so by having a zero at s and one at r q bar would be, i mean q would be set to one and q bar would be set to zero okay similarly by having a zero at r and one at s q would be set to zero and q bar to one therefore giving both ones to the both rs inputs we'd have the q and q bar states unchanged but again i would depict it by red by giving zeros to both the r and s inputs right here the q and q bar states would go to the don't care states as you all can see here so these are the don't care states okay and this state like as before i showed you in case of the nor gates i mean the in case of the nor rs latch right over here this state should be avoided okay should be avoided as the outputs are pretty unpredictable during this condition so having said that i reached to the end of my discussion on this tutorial on the rs latch and 
don't forget to watch our tutorial on digital electronics in the next section okay so till then is thank you for now and goodbye